The movie begins in 1897 in Samana Range, where Lt. Lawrence's troops patrolled the area. Lawrence, a British officer, calls Sergeant Ashar Singh to gather the army to head back to Gulistan. Suddenly, Afghan tribesmen chantingly arrive to slaughter a married Afghan woman due to her refusal to accept her husband, who her family chose for her without her consent. When Ashar concerningly sees her, he unhesitatingly goes to save her from the tribesmen. Lawrence stops him, yet he still continues to combat the tribesmen. Cornered, the tribesmen forcibly hold Ashar captive and plan to chop his head off only if the turban on his head is removed. Ashar refuses to remove his turban, symbolizing his honor and self-respect. Fortuitously, his troop swiftly comes to his rescue and drives away the tribesmen. Sedullah, one of the tribesmen, immediately flees the scene to report to his comrade the attack of the British Indian troops. Due to that, they devised a plan to attack the troop at the Gulistan Fort, a border between British-held territory and the Afghan border. As the British Indian troops return to the Gulistan Fort, the Afghan tribesmen immediately attack them. Ashar, conversing with his friend, Galabo, gets alerted of the tribesmen's presence when they shoot Galabo from afar. Hastily, Ashar carries Galabo to the infirmary to order a nurse to treat him. At the same time, he leaves to fight the tribesmen. Prepared, the British Indian troop gathers to shoot the tribesmen rushing to the fort. However, the tribesmen doubled in numbers and outnumbered the British Indian troops. So, Lawrence orders his men to call on reinforcement through their heliograph. Meanwhile, an Afghan marksman shoots an Indian officer operating the machine gun on the fort. Ashar witnesses his action and thus rushes to attack him. Then, the marksman hastily flees while Ashar chases him. As Ashar is about to shoot him, the marksman calls on backup to attack Ashar. Before Ashar gets shot, the Indian reinforcements arrive to attack the tribesmen. Outnumbered, the tribesmen retreat and flee the fort. Later that day, Lawrence blames the attack on Ashar for triggering the tribesmen on the Samana range. He writes a strong report on his commanding officer, John Houghton, of Ashar's disobedience and insubordination. Consequently, Commander Houghton summons Ashar to his office. Houghton interrogates Ashar for his disobedience to Lawrence's order. Then, Houghton will sign the transfer paper of Ashar to Saragurhi Fort tomorrow morning. Ashar refuses to leave but has to follow his order, otherwise, his service will be revoked. When Ashar leaves his office, he comes across Lawrence, who mocks him for being a slave to the British and a cowardly officer. Lawrence curses him and orders him to leave, yet, Ashar maintains his composure and does not fight back. Then, Ashar visits Galabo in the infirmary. He angrily tells Galabo what Lawrence said to him. He realizes that the Indian soldiers, including him, are not soldiers but rather slaves of the British. He desires to be free from the system, he hopefully utters. Later, he packs and prepares his stuff and flees Gulistan Fort for his transfer to Saragurhi Fort. While he departs, he comes across the married Afghan woman he saved earlier. The woman gives him food and bids farewell when he continues his journey to Saragurhi Fort. As he arrives at Saragurhi Fort, he notices how disorganized Saragurhi soldiers are. Corporal Lal Singh, wearing an unbuttoned uniform, grows confused by his unannounced arrival. With his action and appearance, Ashar assumes something is off in the fort. Later, Ashar witnesses the soldiers in their civilian attire playing a cockfight. They all grow surprised and fearingly line their formation when they see him. Lal Singh explains that there has been no mission for them to accomplish for months, and they have become postmen of other forts instead of soldiers. Furiously, Ashar doesn't take his claim, instead, he instills discipline among them. As their first task, Ashar makes them fight with each other while he unpacks his stuff in his room. However, when he returns to see them, he witnesses them slacking off and singing in the corner. As a result, he punishes Lal Singh, in charge of the soldiers, a one week without food due to the disobedience of his men. Despite this, the soldiers insist on accepting the punishment as well. The next day, the soldiers begin wearing their uniform as per the order of Ashar. They also clean their boots and rifles and position themselves in every corner of the fort to guard. Due to this, the soldiers grow infuriated by Ashar's strictness. They talk wrong about him behind his back and show off their pretentious toughness when he's nearby. The following day, the soldiers entertain themselves by not thinking about food. Their punishment has not yet lasted a week, but Ashar sympathetically calls it off. The soldiers are joyful except for Shanda, who halts them to eat and not be swayed by Ashar's pity. When Ashar hears about this, he tells the soldiers that he has punished himself to be fair to them. The soldiers change their perspective toward him and start respecting and accepting him as their leader. Meanwhile, Sedula convinces other Afghan tribes to join forces with his planned attack on the British Indian soldiers. 
he plans to destroy the three forts under British Indian authority, namely, Gulistan, Lockhart, and Saragurhi. He promises to pay double the authority's money to the tribes so they'll make a deal with him. The following day, the Afghan tribes devise a plan to attack all three forts starting with the Saragurhi fort. If they successfully invade Saragurhi fort, Gulistan and Lockhart fort will have difficulty passing messages. And when the tribesmen's conspiracy succeeds, they can conquer the remaining forts at night. After some time, Houghton notices through his monocular the Afghan tribe marching to the Saragurhi fort. He immediately alerts Ashar through a heliograph of the enemies approaching them. Then, Ashar and his men see over 10,000 tribesmen encircling their fort from a distance. The tribesmen synchronize the beat of their drums to threaten the soldiers and invite them to a battle. Knowing a battle will take place, Gulistan and Lockhart Fort will send reinforcements to Saragurhi immediately. Later on, Ashar witnesses Sedala, leading the tribesmen, order the beheading of a married woman he saved weeks ago. Devastated, Ashar gathers all his men, composed of only 21 soldiers, including him. Then, he reads out loud the message sent by their British officers. Unfortunately, the reinforcements could not reach their fort due to the barriers placed by the tribesmen, according to the message delivered. Due to that, Ashar and his men will combat the tribesmen on their own, even if they're outnumbered. Ashar persuades them to abandon the fort and escape. Still, the soldiers firmly stick to their principle to battle with the enemies even if it costs them their lives. Ashar asks them one more time if they'll change their mind. Shanda angrily provokes him to weaken their resolve. He asks if he is threatened by the 10,000 tribesmen approaching them. In response, Ashar desires to combat the tribesmen and not be labeled as slaves of the British and cowardly officers. Meanwhile, as the tribesmen continue to beat their drums and simultaneously march, Ashar loudly beats his drum to interrupt the tribesmen's synchronization. Afterward, the tribesmen stop beating their drums when the Saragurhi soldiers form a line beside Ashar. After that, the battle begins when Ashar shoots one of the tribesmen. Provoked, the tribesmen furiously chant while Ashar and his men scatter the fort to position themselves to fight. Then, Sedullah orders his men to attack the fort. The tribesmen hastily run to the fort and are shot by Ashar and his men. Numerous tribesmen fall dead, yet their comrades keep approaching the fort to attack. Later on, a tribesman throws a grenade at the fort, which makes Bhagwan Singh, one of the soldiers, panic and approach it. Bhagwan falls down from the fort and gets shot by a marksman multiple times. Due to that, Ashar locates the marksman position and aims his rifle at him to shoot. Luckily, he finally hit the marksman after many trials. Nan Singh, one of the soldiers, rushes to pick up Bhagwan's body outside the fort. Ashar protects him from the approaching tribesmen. Later, Ashar orders Ram Singh to swiftly take Bhagwan's old post. They all shoot the approaching tribesmen but grow anxious when they suddenly retreat. Afterward, Sedola, Khan Masood, and Gul Badsha, leaders of the Afghan tribes, approach the fort to negotiate with Ashar. When Ashar exits the fort to meet with the leaders of the Afghan tribes, he firmly utters that he and his men will fight until the very end, even if they know it's a losing battle. Masood persuades him to surrender, hence, more bloodshed will occur. Firmly, Ashar refuses to surrender and provokes them before they leave. Later, Ashar's men capture two tribesmen and wrap them with explosive devices. Ashar sends them back to their comrades, tied with cloth covering their mouths. When the two tribesmen reach their comrades' position, their explosive device detonates and kills hundreds of them. Consequently, the soldiers rejoice and mock the tribesmen. Provoked, the Afghan tribe leaders order their men to attack the fort. Alerted, the soldiers shoot at them before they even reach the fort. However, another two soldiers fall dead as the enemies shoot at them. When multiple tribesmen reach the fort, they forcibly hit the fort's door with their rifles when they reach the fort. Ashar hears the loud pounding at the fort's entrance, so he orders Lal Singh, Sundar, Daya, Hira, Jeevan, and Bola to guard the door. When the tribesmen manage to put a hole in the door, one of them takes a peek at the hole but gets shot by the soldier inside. Feared, the tribesmen step back and continuously shoots at the door. Unfortunately, they hit Bola, who eventually falls dead from the bleeding. When Lal and the others run out of ammunition, they slowly open the fort's door to lure the tribesmen. Confused, the tribesmen grow surprised as Lal and the others exit the fort to combat them using their bayonets. After that, Lal and the others slaughter the tribesmen attacking them. However, they eventually get shot consecutively by the Afghan marksmen. Luckily, Jeevan survives the shooting and immediately closes the fort's door to not let the approaching tribesmen enter. Meanwhile, the tribesmen gather all their comrades' dead bodies to place on the walls of the fort to serve as their steps to climb the fort wall. The soldiers shoot at them and stab them with their bayonets. Sadly, 
Some tribesmen reach the fort's top and eventually kill numerous soldiers. The soldiers are mercilessly stabbed and shot in the head. One of them even sacrifices himself by jumping off the fort with a bomb to detonate with him and the numerous tribesmen. Then, the tribesmen suddenly retreat and confuse Ashar for their departure. Unexpectedly, the tribesmen blow on the fort's west wall and surprise Ashar and the remaining soldiers. With Ashar, Gurmukh and Shanda left to guard the fort, Ashar assigns Shanda to come with Gurmukh to the Lamp Tower, where they pass on their message to Gulistan and Lockhart Fort. After that, the tribesmen roar in the fort to attack Ashar. Ashar courageously slaughters the approaching tribesmen but gets cornered and stabbed multiple times. When Shanda sees Ashar falls to the ground, he furiously shoots the tribesmen, which makes them learn his current location. So, the tribesmen rush to attack him and pierce multiple swords into his body. Ashar, on the other hand, weakly combats the tribesmen cornering him. On the verge of his death, Sedala attempts to remove his turban, but Ashar quickly stabs his neck making him fall dead instantly. With Sedala's death, Khan Masood decides to not continue invading the Gulistan and Lockhart forts. He informs Ghul Badshah about it and eventually orders the tribesmen to leave. However, as they're about to leave, Ghul Badshah sees Gurmukh, the last soldier alive, in the lamp tower and orders his men to set him on fire. Gurmukh, light on fire, slowly exits the tower and angrily approaches Ghul Badshah. He forcibly holds him while he detonates the explosive device to kill them both. After that, the tribesmen loot the dead soldiers' belongings before they exit the fort and set it on fire. The movie ends when the Gulistan soldiers, including the British officers, pay respect to the fallen Saragurhi soldiers. The British government posthumously awarded the fallen soldiers the British Order of Merit, the highest gallantry award an Indian soldier could ever receive. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.